Suppose you have three n-bit integers, x, y, and s. I will tell you how you can compute x to the power y mod s efficiently. Efficiently here means in polynomial time in n. A naive way of computing a power would be to just multiply the number again and again and again with itself. So in order to compute x to the power y, we could do something like x times x times x times x and do this y times. Of course, we only need to do our computation mod s, so we can prevent the numbers from getting larger and larger by performing the operation mod s in every step. So we would get a function like this. We start with a equals 1, and then we go through a loop from 1 to y and we do a equals a times x mod s. And then at the very end we return the result, we return a. The problem with this is that it's not efficient because we would go through the loop y number of times. But we said y is an n-bit number so the size of y, the value of y, might be as large as 2 to the n, and therefore we would perform this loop potentially an exponential number of times in n. And we don't want that. So is there a more efficient way of doing this? And the answer is yes. The problem here is that we really only make very little progress in each iteration of the loop. But we can make sure that we make much faster progress in terms of which exponent we reached by essentially more or less doubling the exponent in every step. So here is a recursive procedure for this. We call it the power function. And first of all we observe that if y the exponent is equal to 0 then we know what the result is. It's just 1, right? So if you take x to the power 0, that is just 1. Otherwise, if y is an even number, we compute a as x to the power of y divided by 2 mod s. And we do this by using our function recursively. And then we return the square of a mod s. I hope you agree that this gives the correct result. If we take x to the power of y over 2 and then square that, that is exactly the same as x to the power y. If y is odd, we do something only slightly different. We compute x to the power of y minus 1 divided by 2. Notice the minus 1. This ensures that if y is odd, then y minus 1 is even, so it's divisible by 2. And then we compute that mod s and we return that number squared and multiply it by x. And then we take mod s to keep the number small and we return the result. I hope again that you agree that this is correct. If we take x times uh, x to the power of y minus 1 divided by 2 squared. That's exactly the same as x to the power y. And now observe what really happens here. Um, how deep is the recursion? What is the computational time here? And we realize that in every step of the recursion, as we go down, uh, the exponent that we are talking about at least halves. If uh, y is even, we divide it by 2, and if y is odd, we subtract 1 and then divide by 2. So in every step, y, this exponent we are interested in, halves, and therefore there will be at most log of y many steps. And log of y is not larger than n. So we have at most n steps in this recursion, and each step of the recursion can also be run efficiently because the only thing we're really doing is we do some very basic comparisons and operations. We square a number or we multiply two numbers, 
mod s. And we ensure that all the numbers that we're dealing with are always at most s, because all our computations are done mod s. So we are really only multiplying a few numbers in each step, and each of those numbers uh, have at most n bits in them. And this is how you quickly, efficiently, in polynomial time, do a computation like x to the power y mod s.